Well, hello boys and girls and welcome to another episode of the Web Monkey. And today we're talking about local WordPress development and there is a major advantage uh, towards developing your WordPress websites locally on your PC. And the advantage is the fact that you don't have to rely on web hosting or internet connectivity, which means that if you're stuck in some remote place like the desert or a jungle, or if you're in outer space, you can still continue to work on your WordPress website, which is just awesome. Although I pretty much doubt if I was stuck in any one of those places, I would be thinking about WordPress development. But nevertheless, we are going to need to make use of two major software. The very first one being XAMPP, you're looking at the download page right now. And the second, of course, would be WordPress. So I need you to do this for me. Go to WordPress.org and then click on the big blue download WordPress button right here. Click there and then you can go ahead and download the version 4.7.4, which is the latest version of WordPress as of the time of recording this video. And then you want to go ahead and also download the XAMPP version that fits uh, your computer. So if you're a Windows guy like me, you want to go ahead and download the version 7.1.2. If you're for Linux, there's a version for Linux right there. And uh, if you're a Mac user, well, we do have versions for Mac as well. So go ahead and download your version. And if you're wondering what exactly XAMPP is, well, it's basically a software that allows you to create a local web server for testing and deployment purposes. So basically just think of it as what allows you to develop WordPress locally, all right? And if you are an abbreviation freak, you like knowing exactly what the letters stand for, well, the X stands for cross-platform, which in other words means that you can use XAMPP on any operating system. Uh, the A stands for Apache, the M stands for Maria, uh, the B and the P's stand for PHP and Perl respectively. So that's basically what uh, XAMPP is. So I have already downloaded both uh, software and you can see right now I do have my local WordPress folder. I have WordPress and I have the XAMPP. So what I'm going to do right now is to double click on the XAMPP installer file. Let's go ahead now and click yes to install XAMPP on our PC. And you're going to see Bitnami, click OK for the warning, click next, click next, click next, click, oh, don't click next here. <laughs> uncheck the box that says I'll learn more about Bitnami, you don't need that. So I'll uncheck this box, go back to next, next, and uh, so there you go, XAMPP is currently running, it's currently installing rather. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause the video because this could take uh, a few minutes for it to finish installing. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'll resume once the installation has completed. And we are back. And as you can see right now, the installation has almost completed. You're going to see this message that says, uh, do you want to start the control panel now? Click finish and then click on the, <laughs> if you speak German, well, you can uh, select the German flag, but I don't speak German. So I'm going to click uh, save. And there you go. So now we have access to the exam control panel. And what you want to do is to go ahead and now click start for the Apache module and start for the MySQL module as well, because this is what we're going to need to be able to create a local uh, WordPress website. All right. So we've got both of them running. And if you now go to your C folder on your PC, uh, you should see the XAMPP folder right there. So you can double click inside. You will see htdocs folder, double click inside as well. And now from here, you're going to see all these files. And of course, if you decide to open up a new window and just type in uh, local host, press enter, you're going to see this message, the dashboard, welcome to exam for Windows 7.1.2, blah, 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 blah. All right, so what I'm going to do right now would be to go back to my htdocs folder, okay? And then check this out, okay? I'm going to go ahead now and delete everything because we don't need it. I'm going to delete everything. And now inside of the empty folder, I am going to create a new folder and I'm going to name this uh, samplesite.com, all right? And then inside of samplesite.com, I am going to create a new document, a new text document. Uh, let's name this index.p. 
PHP. And then I'll go ahead now and edit it. And I will say uh, this, this is a test. You have been warned. All right. So that's a test. I'm going to go ahead now and save the file. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to make sure that Sam is actually working properly. All right. So let's now go back. Let me just drag this to my other window. Let's go back to localhost. All right. And then I am going to go ahead now and press enter. And you should see your sample site.com. And if you click on the link, you will see your index.php.txt file. Click on it. And now you should see the message that says, this is a test you have been won. So if you see that, congratulations, you have successfully installed and configured XAM on your PC properly. All right, awesome. So next now would be to uh, install WordPress locally, all right? So let's go back to my folder. Uh, where is it? Looking for the folder. Uh, let me drag this back here. All right, local WordPress. So for the zip file for WordPress, I'm going to go ahead now and extract everything. All right, so this may take, uh, this shouldn't take too long. This should take a few more seconds, I hope. All right, so come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on. All right, <laughs> awesome. So now we have the WordPress folder. And then inside we have the uh, major configuration files for WordPress. All right, so I'm going to go ahead right now and I will cut everything. And then I'm going to go back to my htdocs folder. Now create a new folder for our website, all right, for our local site. So I am going to name this localsite.com, uh, all right. And then inside of localsite.com, I am going to paste all the configuration files for the site. Awesome. So now let's go back to the uh, local host. Let's refresh this page and now you should see localsite.com. So if you click on the link, it should bring you to this page where you can now go ahead and install WordPress. All right. So for English, I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and click let's go. But there is one more thing we need to do, and that is to create a database. Okay. We haven't created a database yet for our installation. So to create a database, I am going to bring in a new window in here and I'm going to go back and I'm going to say local, uh, local host, and then type in PHP, my admin, and then a forward slash at the end. All right. So go ahead to do that and then press enter. It should bring you to the PHP, my admin page. And this is what you're going to use to create a new database. And you will also need to create a new user as well for that database. So from here right now, click on databases, all right? And then from here, I'm going to create the uh, name for our database. So I'm going to say, this is going to be the uh, local, local site database. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and create the database. Let's now go back to PHP my admin, go back to databases. And then from here, you should see a list of some other databases created by default. Click on the one for the local site, which is the one that you just created. Click on the check privileges, rather click on the link that says check privileges, click in there. And now you should now see add user account. So let's go ahead and create a, a new user. So for the username right now, I am going to say local user would be the name uh, for the host name, change this to local. All right. And then for the password, you can either use your own password or simply let uh, PHP generate one for you. I am going to do that. And from here right now, I am going to click on the check all for global privileges because you want to give all rights to this particular user. All right. So let's click on check all. And then from right now, I'm going to go ahead and click go and congratulations. If you didn't see this message, then you've successfully created a new user. However, if you see this message, well, we have to do something. All right. That means there is something wrong. So if you do see this message, what you want to do is to go back to your htdocs folder. All right. Don't panic. Just go back to your htdocs folder or rather, I'm sorry, go back to your exam folder. 
All right, your exam folder. So from your exam folder, you should see uh, my SQL. All right, so double click on my SQL. And then inside of this folder, create a new folder. And you want to name that folder lib. All right. And then inside of the lib folder, just go ahead and create another folder again called plugin. I don't know why this happens, but it, it is an issue with um, PHP my admin. Sometimes it happens sometimes. So you've created the lib folder instead of MySQL, and inside of lib, you have another folder called plugin. All right. So let's go back now and refresh this page again. So I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, username again, local user. All right, for the host name, let's go back to local again, generate a new password. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this new password, okay? I'll go ahead and copy this new password. And you can even paste that somewhere safe, all right? So from here again, I'm going to click check all for global privileges. And now let's go ahead and click go. And there you go. So you should be able to see this message, message and we have successfully created a new user called local user for the database local site. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now let's go back to the WordPress configuration page because now we have everything we need. I'm going to go ahead and click the password and paste the password that I copied. All right. So for the database name, it's going to be uh, local host, right? For the username, it is local user. Uh, let me just make sure it's actually local host. Okay, local site actually, local local site, not local host, <laughs> local site. Okay, local site is the name for the database, local user, that's the password. Uh, for the database host, you can leave that. For the table prefix, if you plan on doing multiple installations of WordPress on several uh, dev sites, you may want to add a prefix that will help you identify each uh, unique installation. So for this one, I'll just add local. All right. So go ahead now and click submit. And now you can go ahead and click run the install. And now we can now begin to add the titles and uh, some other information. Uh, ignore this Iceman. The only reason why I seen Iceman is because I practiced this previously before I started recording. So that's why you have I you, uh, Iceman over there. So for the site title right now, I'm just going to say local site. Uh, the username is going to be local uh, user. Or you could use something else. Uh, for the password, I'll just go ahead and copy this password again. Uh, what we have right here is the uh, credentials for the WordPress backend itself. We're no longer on the database. This is your actual local WordPress website right now. So uh, for the email, Let's go ahead and add our email. And of course, you want to uh, to uh, check the box that says discourage search engines from indexing this site because this is a local installation. So check the box and then go ahead and click install WordPress. And there you go. So we have successfully installed WordPress on our site. So let's try logging in. So now I have my local user as the username and then the password is the one I just copied again. Let's paste that. I am going to log in and there you go. So now we have successfully installed WordPress. You can click on local site right here. This will bring you to your front page and you can see we using the WordPress 2017 theme. So that's how you would install WordPress locally on your PC. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the comments uh, section below. I will try my best to answer all questions. And uh, before I go, just in case you close the uh, XAMP, the control panel window, you can always access it from your toolbar at the bottom. You should see this icon and then that would allow you to have access to it. Make sure that always your Apache and my SQL services are running. Uh, if you're no longer working on your dev site, you can go ahead and click stop. But bear in mind that if you stop any one of these services, you will not be able to access your sites locally anymore. So that's it. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed the information, please hit that like button. That would mean a lot to me. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I put out lots of useful tutorials like this on a weekly basis. So thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, I will see you next time and bye-bye.